So what we do is that we develop tools that make energy efficiency simple, scalable, and sustainable. We, we see we are in the age where there's a lot of data around us, uh, specifically when we talk about industries, we have uh, smart energy meters, sensors, data loggers, and of course we have the production and process data coming through ERP. But, but what is really is the problem is that is make data work. We have a lot of data around us. We can, we can uh, have access to, let's say, very basic analytics which give us, show the data in a particular format. But the real question is, can all this data be used to derive actionable insights which can foster energy efficiency and energy productivity? Uh, mind you, I'm referring to a term called energy productivity which is now widely replacing the term energy efficiency because energy uh, on really does not uh, carry any significant meaning until and unless it's correlated with production or process. Now, if we are able to predictive analytics, uh, for, for, for instance, when you look at the industrial commercial building segment in the country, it can ease out 13,500 megawatts if the potential of energy efficiency is completely uh, sort of taken care of on the demand side, which is equivalent to 75 gigawatts of solar power added. 75 US billion dollars on one side, and then you have opportunity to be able to release. But mind it, there's a gap that we need to fill. What's that gap? Industry-specific algorithms and tools. So the real question is, today, data availability is not an, an, issue, an issue. Data handling is really not an issue. It is just that, how can we convert all that available data into actionable information? And for us, the, really, the key is to be able to look at developing industry-specific and algorithms and tools. That is what our company really focuses on. How have we done it? Now, let's take a perfect example. We started looking at a textile uh, segment back in September 2012. So we first looked at one of 50,000 odd spindle textile spinning plant. The first time when we conducted a thorough analysis, it took us three months' time. We had to put two senior resources on site. The next time when we did it, we could replace one of the senior analysts with a junior analyst, reduce our project duration time to one and a half months. Now that we did because by that time we were able to standardize our data acquisition procedures. We knew what to look at and we knew what not to look at. Now look at the amazing transformation that happened in the third time. We did it in 20 days without there being a need of a senior analyst to be there. So there was just one junior analyst. We reduced that time frame to 20 days. So that is 5x scale. Now, even if I don't increase my uh, revenue per megawatt, I still have five times realization because in that time I can serve five clients, whereas I was only serving one client. That's scale for us. But of course, we are not only looking at scaling in terms of the number of clients that we handle. It's the realization that happens per megawatt per client. And how do we do that? So in the process, we developed certain tools Pretty fundamental. All of us probably would be knowing electrical motors. 60% of the industrial electrical energy is consumed across motors. And yet we do not have a tool that can tell us operational efficiency of the motor. So today if I were to, as an industry uh, operator, if I were to find out how much of an operating efficiency is there for motor, I would need to take it out of the circuit. It's not possible for an industry to do that. That's where we simplified the process. We developed a cloud-based tool where basic data like current voltage can fit in, and what you get as an output is the operational efficiency, the reason for deviation, and what could be a possible solution. So you see in the third case, while we were able to standardize the data acquisition process, because of these tools, 60% of our data processing and analytics happened automatically. So even we reduced our back-end operation. So our analyst was not required to do basic calculations and observations. It was more skilled interface that was required. Some of the things that we have done, which we take pride in, we did for in flat 18 days, we developed an energy forecasting model for an aluminum major company, Nalco, which is Asia's largest refinery. They have 51,84,000 data sets hitting their DCS system every year. Now, which was not being utilized. What we did in flat 18 days is to give them a model where they can forecast their energy consumption based on certain parameters. And of course, the latest one uh, is that we've been asked to do a pilot project for 30 SMEs, which has been funded by Jeff and Unido. So it's the first time, actually, in India that we are using energy data analytics to track investments in energy efficiency in small, medium-scale enterprises. Uh, in terms of our growth plans, getting straight to them, 
we are, are, are looking at targeting managing around about 8,000 megawatts by 2019-20. Uh, I, I met someone last, uh, you know, yesterday morning, and he said that Umesh, 8,000 megawatt is almost some what some of the countries consume. But but that's the that's the sort of potential that's there. That's the sort of target that we have aimed, and that's the sort of market we are looking at really aiming. That's the plan. How are we going to do that? Is that we want to become sector agnostic. That is where the real opportunity lies. We were going to be changing from textile to aluminium, focusing on iron, steel, pulp and paper, paper sugar. In any case, these happens to be the largest industrial energy consumers in the, uh, in the country. Other Asian markets for textile. We're strong in textile. We like to go and move into Thailand, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, where there are a lot of textile people around. And of course, as I said, the focus is by writing industry-specific algorithm tools, we would aim to increase our per megawatt per customer realization from where we are, make it 2x. So we are able to reduce downtime, increase our revenue realization, that scale, what we are looking at. In terms of team, uh, Devdut, uh, he's been there with us for four years. He's, he's done his MBA in energy management. He's our lead analyst, energy analyst. Amit uh, uh, from NIT KGP alumnus, he also happens to be my elder brother. He worked with Goldman Sachs and Mankind Corporation before, and uh, he's looking into product development. And myself, uh, I've done my honors in physics. I like to talk a lot, have free coffee, and that's where I, uh, most of my work is around strategy, sales, and product design. So I've traveled for more than 1.5 lakh kilometers in the last two years, met more than 500 industries. So this idea of doing industry-specific algorithm does not come out of sitting in a closed room and saying that, wow, I have an idea. It comes from the shop floor, that we can make data work and not just make it look good. Uh, we are looking at raising uh, three crores INR. Uh, as I said, the focus is around uh, making things scalable, for which we would need to increase our internal capacities, develop tools, make it, um, you know, sort of uh, stitch around monetization strategies around it. So this is pretty much what we are looking at doing with, uh, with the sort of money, major chunk of that going into product development and upgrading our infrastructure. Uh, I mean, one key thing that we are looking at increasing our per megawatt realizations from 1.25 lakh per megawatt per year in 2015-16 to 2.5 lakh per megawatt per year. And by 2017-18, we'll be managing 1,000 megawatts in total. And by saying managing 1,000 megawatts, we would be releasing 100 megawatts back into the circuit. So which would be avoiding capacity addition of close to 200 to 250 megawatts. Uh, just thought that it, may, it might make sense to tell what we have done so far in the, as the last slide. Uh, that's, that's pretty much about it. These are some of the clients we have. And yeah, thank you so much. Open for Q&A. So. I'll give you a perfect example of what we did in spinning for humidification. A very simple example. So, you know, you have a motor fan combination. So we look at we sort of understood that even before we go into engineering modeling, there's a lot of a lot of sort of a story can be told by the data. So in that context, we developed an indicator that will help us assess plants irrespective of how they have designed. So we came up with an indicator KWH per meter cube, which is how much of energy is being required for per meter cube of air that I'm displacing. And to our surprise, we found that that's, that's a good enough indicator which can tell me about the health of the system. So we went about then, uh, went about finding out an industry-specific benchmark uh, in terms of from the projects that we have done. So we looked at that, and then of course, as you rightly said, because we have access to a lot of data, for example, textile, uh, we are managing more than 12 units. So we have access to machines, the age, the sort of uh, mechanism that goes in. So we sort of develop indexes based on the consumption. So we don't essentially go into engineering modeling, which is complex and not where we would like to focus on. We let use the data in terms of predicting the indexes. So for example, we've released indexes for textile units in terms of how much of a consumption should be in process A, process B, process C, what's the overall index in terms of the industry, how can it change depending upon the raw material you are using. So for instance, if you make a linen shirt uh, of a particular account, how much energy consumption would be there? We can forecast that using those indexes. Uh, 
to, I, I, I wouldn't like to add more complexity around it, but that's what we really focused on. And what we, and the solution that we came out with uh, was, was equally more simple. We just shifted six pole motors to four pole motors because we realized that they were not supposed to be designed at six pole motors. Now, but that was something not looked in the plant for 20 years. And you know how much did, was the plant losing for year on year? They lost one and a half crores every year. No, I think I, I, that's, that has really been the problem that we've been trying to identify when we look at energy efficiency or productivity. Often we have had people coming back and saying, do you have the sector expertise? So we want to be experts in the energy domain. We don't want to be ex experts in the sectoral domain. We, and, and that is where we want to go deep. I mean, so for example, today when we look at textile, we would be able to expand to other regions by the amount of work that we have done. And, and that's not really uh, a lot of uh, developmental work that's going to happen. But our idea is to cover as much ma major energy intensive industries as possible. So that's why we, we are not straight away going into the commercial building domain. We want to restrict ourselves to industry, which has been neglected by far. In, in, you know, so whatever work has happened, has happened in the commercial building space because it's relatively easier to comprehend there than to go in an industry because there's a lot of complexity that sort of creeps in. Right. Right. So, do you benchmark against those, or have you taken a look at some of those companies? So, I mean, we haven't like, taken a look at, at some of those companies, but there have been people who have been. Back. But one difference is that people have been focusing on equipments. We don't focus on equipment. So it's equipments plus process. So all our indicators are actually a reflection of the process, production process, and energy parameters. So that's that's the way we benchmark. We just don't look at the equipments. So for our, I mean, we have a fixed fee model and a success fee model. So, and, a, and our typical engagement with the client is actually for a two to three year uh, contract. We don't enter into a short term contract. Even our proof of concept for that matter is a one year uh, contract that we do. Because, I mean, we deeply believe that energy efficiency is that something that cannot be said in one month. I mean, or if I go into a plant for 15 days, I cannot really come up with matrix in terms of that you can save X or Y energy. And then we have subscription fee-driven model for our, our, the apps and the tools that they use, which is, which is either yearly or, or, or you know, bi-yearly. And, and one thing, we don't promise savings. See, that's, that's, that's one of the innovations that we have done in terms of going and talking to people, and that has, paid up, that has paid us well. Because conventionally, people have gone into industry saying that I can give you 20%, 25% returns, but that has never happened. Until unless I understand how the plant is operating, uh, I would not be able to comment on how much they can save. I need to have those indexes, and that indexes cannot come in, uh, you know, in a short span of time. And it's a transformative process. It doesn't really happen in one month. So industries which understand, in fact, we have acquired projects of around about 122 lakhs in September 2012, and they have not been, uh, matrix have not been defined for them. In the sense, it's not a pitch which goes and says, I can, I can help you uh, save 15%, or I like, guarantee I will save you 15%. What we look at selling our clients is how we can help them take the path of sustained energy intensity reductions. Something that should sustain over a period of five years. That is what we go and pitch to the to the management, and that is what has been working in our favor as as of now. So, are you seen as a product company, or are you seen as a consulting company? As? as a product company, we eventually want to transform into a product company. What do the customers see you as? They see us currently as a solutions company. But we want to increase our capacity by moving into products. I just showed an example. Yeah, but, 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 but just if, if I go to and talk to a client, they will look us at a, as a solutions company, not a consulting company. Okay. It is that because we, we, a normal consulting company would not be looking at that sort of a bandwidth. Yeah. How much time take for you to uh, engage like in a year? How many months you spend over a day as a customer? So uh, for a typical proof of concept that we do, uh, uh, it's, it's 75 man days over a period of year. 
not for 75, there's a host of things that we do, uh, which means all what we would do in a typical three-year contract, we do prototypes. And we also provide them access to, so for example, we only do POCs for textile right now. We have stopped, so we give them access to our cloud-based in energy information management and analytics portal. And then we help them, support them in terms of moving into an assessment of energy efficiency. So what do you say to over three years by one plan? Uh, typically, our current uh, revenue realization is around about 0.75 lakh per megawatt per year. So our typical client would be five to six megawatts minimum of energy consumption. Thank you, Vish. Uh, I think we have to move on to the next. Uh, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Much. Thank you.